In this video I'm going to wire up MKS Gen and print a Benji at the end. I'm going to use this MKS Gen PCB schematic for wiring everything, link in the video description. I started with the extruder wiring. Looking at the cables, first I shortened Z-probe, then recrimped XH254 3-pin connector that would click into the board. Looking from the side of the clip, the wires go in the order, brown, blue, black. I cut the cable, removed the outer shell, stripped three inner wires, scrimped them and finally inserted them in the same pattern as the old connector. Since I was looking at shortening the cables, I did the same thing for the heater thermistor. I replaced XH254 to pin connector, shortened the cable, then cut and recrimped the appropriate length. Thermistor is a resistor, so the wire order doesn't matter for it. Looking at the photo of the wiring job, temperature probe goes to J16, the middle connector. I also did the same thing to the extruder thermistor. I cut the pound connector and shortened the cables. Then replaced it with XH254. Extruder thermistor goes into J21. After identifying all of the extruder cables, I cleaned up the nylon strands, then connected the extruder heater as well as part cooling fan, which is right next to the connector for the power uh, to the heating bed. For 24 volt DC connector for the heated bed, I used a regular 250 volt AC wire that I used to be an extension cord. I cut the cable to size, strip it and attach it to the connector. I did some cable management and inserted wire holders behind Y axis that would provide a path for X and Y axis wiring. Here I made a mistake and connected Y motor and end stop wires to what appear to be X motor and end stop connectors. Looking at the wires of Z axis, the original motors had coil wirings requiring to swap green and red wires. I replaced them with the pancake motors and the wiring is likely to differ. I didn't remember how to test motor wiring with a multimeter, so I connected the existing wiring to see if that would still work. I needed to provide power to test my setup and while doing that I wanted to use ferrule connector to cap all of the power cables as I've been previously annoyed by dealing with conductor strands from AC wires. I bought this package of ferrules and jaws for it. I have SN23B and SN01BM crimpers, I've done the measurements and these jaws should fit at least one of those. Of course, just didn't fit, they are too wide, I measured wrong. Still, I wanted to use ferrules, so to crimp them in a pinch I used a biggest locking pliers I own. This isn't as good as using a proper crimper, but it works, some of the time. The ferrules fit into the power connector, though sometimes the ferrules just slip out. I have an extra power connector from power supply to the board for the heated bed. I bought it at a hardware store and attached it to a spare MKS gen connector some time ago, so there are extra two power wires coming in. I ended up redoing heating bed wiring using smaller size green ferrules as the red ones kept slipping off the wire. Then I wrapped some tape around heated bed connector. Once everything is proven to work, I will replace uh, the, the cables with zip ties. I connected power cable segments to the power supply via Wago style connectors. I tried attaching ferrules to the ends, but the jackets didn't fit. To test the power, I reset front interface and disconnected USB from the board. After connecting power, there didn't seem to be any sparks. After connecting USB, I attempted to move Z-axis, 
The motors didn't move and instead vibrated in a place indicating incorrect wiring. Green and red wires for Z-axis needs to be unswapped, but before that I needed to verify if Z-probe is connected correctly. Z-probe worked. The light was faint, not visible to the camera, but it was there. Also, the status for Z-probe was shown to be triggered when I ran M119. I removed old cables for the Z-axis and replaced them with some of the original cables that I bought in a package of 10. The cables fit well for the farther end, but for the end closer to the board I had a bit of extra wiring. I attempted to connect X-axis and the end stop was just barely enough wire to see if the connections work. I will extend the wires later. I ran G28 to check the setup. Z-axis moved, but in the opposite direction. To fix that, I updated a parameter in configuration H in Marlin. Looking for the direction line, invert Z dear seems to be it. And looking further into the config, I already had inverted extruder direction. After uploading the newly compiled firmware, I ran G28. Z-axis moved in the right direction, but Y-axis didn't move. And the probe is way too high so the nozzle collided with the pad. After loosening the screw holding Z-probe in place, I used my gaffer tape converted Y scripts to turn it clockwise to move the probe closer to the pad. After connecting Y-axis motor, I ran G28 again. I kept my hand on the power button and managed to run G28 without damaging the pad. Next up, I attempted to test heated bed at 50 degrees, but instead I set the extruder to that temperature, which has also worked. Then I tested heated bed, and it worked too. Since the board is now mounted on the right side of the printer, wires to access motors and end stop will need to be much longer, so I extended them. First, I measured both wires, starting with motor wire, uh, attach the wire ends with the tape, then clean up the rest of the wiring. I made sure the motor wire is long enough for the maximum Z position. Then I did the same thing for X end stop. This wire is slightly longer than the motor wire because the end stop goes a little further away than the motor connector. I started with soldering the end stop wires. I attached a heat shrink and moved it away from the heat of the soldering iron. After I soldered in the black wire, I realized that pre-tinned wires are easier to work with. I pre-tinned the ends for green and red wires and soldered them together. Then I turned down the heat to 200 C and moved the soldering iron heater over the heat shrink to insulate the connections. Motor wires for X-axis motor are set in the following way. Black and blue are connected straight through green and red wires are flipped. I wanted to keep that pattern as I extended the cables. I should have made green and red wires shorter than blue and black as the former pair is sticking out, but it's not worthwhile to fix that, so I kept my current setup. Since I was working on motor wires, I decided to shorten the wiring for Z motor that is closest to the board. I cut it to size, crimped it with XH254 connector, and then attached the connector to a 4-pin housing. When I connected all of the motors and stop and power, I ran a G28. Then the motors worked. Then I did what I thought were the final steps. I attached and connected the fan bank with wires uh, for fans going to the daughter board. I replaced the tape holding extruder and heated bed harness with zip ties. I also attached zip ties to the back of the extruder and tied down the smooth rods for the Y-axis. Having done all that, I realized that the unused end step mount for X axis is interfering with the coupler for the T8 rod for the Z axis. So I removed the excess assembly. 
and then remove the mount by starting a cut with a knife and then removing the part with a paint scraper. In retrospect, I should have just lowered the couplers. While assembling the x-axis again, I found uh, an easier way of attaching z-tops to t-mounts by holding the later ones with magnets while screwing in the M5 bolts. As there was enough clearance for the couplers, I did the final adjustments for nozzle height, Everything I've tested so far worked, but I noticed a new problem. Mesh bed leveling in Y direction before X. A sign that X and a Y axis cables are flipped. After fixing that and having mesh bed leveling going in the right order, I have also noticed that the Z motors were getting hot, so I changed the V refs from around 500 millivolts, a setting for a regular NEMA 17 motor, to around 240 millivolts, a setting for the pancake motors, which solved the overheating problem. Finally, everything seems to have worked correctly. The bench had some bad overhangs but it's something to fix in the future.